It's so quiet in here. <laughs> Waiting for Mr. Washington to come back. We have a conference going on up the center aisle. And I'm sorry we're late. We were having closed session and we went a little bit late. I'm waiting for the city manager to come back and he's working his way back to the desk. <laughs> All right, here we go. I am calling this session to the Temecula City Council to order. Welcome. And I know we had prelude music, and thank you. So it's Serena Serpesky, correct? Stand up, please. And thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. All right. And we are going to have our invocation this evening, Pastor Jim Diaz from Reliance Church. Pastor Diaz, here he comes. Good evening. And Mr. Washington, will you do us the honor of the flag salute this evening? So if everyone will stand for the invocation and remain standing for the flag salute, please. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, can I just say one thing? Uh, you may. And could we have the audio turned up in the house a little bit? Because we can barely hear. the heat, too. Thank you, Mr. Hall. I've lived in Temecula since 1967, and I'm just... Uh, Really blessed to see the, the city grow, but I'm also thankful for people like yourselves uh, who watch over the city, so oh, I'm, I'm honored you. to be here, and thank you so much. Thank you. Let's pray. Father, we thank you so much for uh, these ladies and gentlemen here, Lord. I thank you for uh, just giving them uh, the wisdom and, and the privilege to take care of this city, and we just uh, pray your blessing on this evening. Father, we just want you to be the center of the conversations, Lord, that are taking place. We pray that you just be in every decision that has to be made. Uh, but again, I just pray for wisdom for all the leaders here in this city, and thank you for Temecula, and pray that you continue to bless it and continue to grow it. And uh, we just thank you for this great city that you've made for us, Lord. And so bless this evening, we pray, and we thank you for it, and we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Pastor. Please remain standing for the Pledge of Allegiance. If you're wondering why we're here tonight, um, ordinarily we would have had a council meeting a week ago that was Veterans Day. Do we have any veterans here tonight? Thank you for your service. We celebrated two holidays last week. We celebrated Veterans Day on Tuesday and the honor of honoring our veterans. And on Saturday we celebrated Puesca Mountain Day. Two years ago our mountain here was freed from the scourge of a quarry. So we have much to be thankful for in this nation and in this city. So please join me by placing your right hand over your heart to say our Pledge of Allegiance. Ready, begin. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Mr. Washington. We are down in numbers this evening, so could we have the roll call, please? Councilmember Comachero is absent. Councilmember Nagar? Good evening, Miss City Clerk. Councilmember Roberts? Here. Councilmember Washington? I'm here. Mayor Edwards? Here. Boy, the sound is really strange this evening. I'm not sure what's going on. Or our, our, maybe, our, maybe, it's the, maybe it's the, maybe the Dea's mics aren't on. Um, the speakers, yeah, it Mine's might be on. the it might be the, the mics are on, but maybe it's the speakers up now? here. They're not on. <laughs> okay, we have some special presentation and proclamations this evening. So we always love to do um, Eagle Scouts, and I see some Eagle Scouts in the audience. So could we please have Ryan? Is it Lebedeff? Come up, please, and Jacob Simons. And this is, uh, Ryan is from Troop 384, and Jacob is from Troop 
2011-2011. And we've got Eagle Scouts. I'm going to bring them down there so we can do them. My goodness, look at all the badges. So I'm going to come down there. Thank you, Jacob. Okay, so come here. So you can see, and we'll hold these up. There's Ryan. Okay. And there is Jacob. So yes, yeah, you can see, we congratulate you for your achievement on receiving the rank of Eagle Scout. We're proud to present you with this award, and we wish you success in your future accomplishments, each of you. And each of you will receive this specially created pin, and it's just for Eagle Scouts. It's a City of Temecula pin, and it's only presented to Eagle Scouts. It was made especially for that, and I think it is very cool. So, City of Temecula, Community pride, and you know, I don't know that we've ever gotten a picture of this pin. I'm going to lay it down here for just a second. Jonathan, let's see if we can actually get a picture of it. Here, if you can open that. It's okay if you want to bite it. It takes an Eagle Scout to open it. <laughs> yeah, it takes an Eagle Scout to open it. The microphone, too. Can you get it? Ah, nice. Move it down a little. There you go. There you go. As close as you can go. Yep. That's it. That's it. But it is beautiful. All right. There you go. I'm going to shake you. your hand. Congratulations. Thank you very much. And congratulations. Thank you. Now, I want you to step right up here, Ryan. And as I'm walking, I want you to tell us a little bit about the project that you worked on. Um, for my project, I... Uh, and look right at Mr. Washington. Hi. <laughs> for my project, I um, built the uh, memorial garden at the Grace Presbyterian Church in memory, in memory of uh, Florence Blakowski. And it was uh, like a little uh, s like sanctuary kind of thing. We put arbors and trees around it and shrubs for the people of the church. Can you hear out in the audience? Yeah. Yeah? Okay. Yeah. And what did you do for your project? For my project, I built bird and bat houses and an owl house for the city of Lake Elsinore. Oh, wonderful. Yeah, and I would like to thank the city of Temecula for congratulating me because Temecula helped me out a lot along with Lake Elsinore. Exactly. Can you elaborate on the outhouse for the city of Lake Elsinore? No, it wasn't an outhouse. <laughs> no. He said bird and bat and owl house. Oh, okay. Okay, okay. Not outhouse. <laughs> See, we do definitely need to turn up that microphone, okay. Jonathan. Yeah, definitely. It, you said bird, bat, and owl house. Yes. O W L house, not outhouse. Okay. So sorry, city of Lake Elsinore. <laughs> so right? Yeah. Yes. Thank you very much, gentlemen. We are very, very proud of you. So thank you. And thank you, parents. We know you're proud too. Parents, do you want to get any pictures? You can come up and get pictures. And you you, you can have them stand up here if you want them to come up here and get a picture. That's easier. It's okay to pose. You, you want them to stand up here? Come up here, and then you can get this city seal up here. And you can stand right in front of me. I don't have to be in the picture, but stand right here, and that way the city seal is behind you. Here. How's that? Want me in it? Yeah. Oh, okay. Brian, move over to the side a little bit. There you go. Right there. Oh. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Parents, we know you're really, really proud. We're very proud of you too, gentlemen. No outhouse. All right.
Mr. Nagar. Okay, do we have any public comments? We do, Madam Mayor. We have one speaker under public comments and two speakers under consent item number eight. Okay, so let's move on to public comments then. A total of 30 minutes is provided so members of the public may address the City Council on items that appear within the consent calendar or a matter not listed on the agenda. Each speaker is limited to three minutes. If the speaker chooses to address the City Council on an item listed on the consent calendar or a matter not listed on the agenda, a request to speak form must be filled out and filed with the City Clerk prior to the City Council addressing public comments and the consent calendar. Once the speaker is called to speak, please come forward and state your name for the record. For all public hearing or council business items on the agenda, a request to speak form must be filed with the city clerk prior to the city council addressing that item. Each speaker is limited to five minutes. Okay, could you call the first speaker, please? Madam Mayor, our only speaker under public comments is Annette Brown. Annette Brown. And Melody, good evening. How are you? Good evening, Mayor Edwards and council members, and I'm really happy to be here at one of council member Ron Roberts' last uh, council meetings. We don't like to talk about it. I know, I told him we were gonna miss him, and I know he's gonna miss me because I'm always bringing him crazy ideas. I know. <laughs> you're not going anywhere, and I'm not going anywhere. <laughs> oh, you're gonna stay right there. That's good, thanks. I'll be around. We got it, okay. We're here representing Visit Temecula Valley, and we're here to talk about our new program, Temecula Chilled. Visit Temecula Valley, along with its partners, the City of Temecula, Pachanga Resort and Casino, Promenade Temecula, Wine Country, and Old Town Temecula and the OTTA, are excited to launch Temecula Chilled this December. Our goal is to develop a branded experience over the next three to five years during the holiday season that will attract residents as well as thousands of tourists to our local businesses throughout Temecula Valley and to feed our economy during this time. This year, with the help of sponsors, we're also able to enhance and build upon some of the programs that we've already created or that you've created and things that exist. We're going to have more lighting, more decorations. We're going to have more activities, more fun. We are theming everything to the Temecula chilled colors and um, ambiance. And we're going to be having something that is known as a luminaria. Everybody know what a luminaria is? OK. We're going to be doing luminarias in wine country on December 10th, which is our shop night. We're calling it our shopping night. And that's also the night that they have the Taste of Old Town, the Holiday Taste of Old Town, which is a walking tour. And then we're also going to be doing a larger project on December 21st at the Sam Hicks Monument Park, where nonprofits are working and selling these luminarias, and then we'll be putting them out in honor of loved ones. So come out and see for yourself everything that there is to do and see in, from December 1st to the 31st. Don't forget, we're also going to have Snowbell Rocking Nights right here at City Hall with our Snow and Light Show. And visit our website. We have one just for this program called TemeculaChilled.com. It'll give you a complete list of our activities. It also shows you what the businesses are doing to support us. And we're also still taking sponsorships, donations, volunteers, participants in the Luminaria Project. So there's plenty of things for you to do. And there's an opportunity absolutely for every nonprofit out there if they want to participate in our program. So please check with us and get back to us. Thank you, Mel. It's excellent. There's, it's going to be very exciting in December. With Temecula's 25th anniversary, there's something every day, every single day. Lots of fun. Thank you. Thank you. All right. So we can go on now to City Council reports. And Mr. Nagar, you beat Mr. Washington? No. That's a rarity. No. Are you okay? <laughs> can you change? You all right? I couldn't get out of second gear. Oh, okay. I have a couple of things. Um, first, uh, uh, someone sent this to me, and I was pleased to see it. The FBI released their uh, uh, 2013 crime statistics for violent crime, and their top 10 safest cities in America, uh, according to their crime statistics. So at number 10, we had Sunnyvale. Number 9, we had Glendale, California. Number 8, Amherst, New York. Number 7, Gilbert, Arizona. Number 6, safest city in America, Temecula, California that um, 
uh, that's quite the honor. They went on and they did some other statistics. Poverty rate is 7.6%, which is the 15th lowest in America. Percentage of adults with high school degrees, 92.3%, uh, 48th highest. Then they went on, number five was Frisco, Texas. Number four, Naperville, Illinois. Number three, Cary, North Carolina. And coming in at number two, we have to congratulate our neighbors to the north, was Murrieta, California. Ooh, nice neighborhood. Um, so a special uh, shout out to our police force. First of all, um, glad to see Murrieta made number two. I think they deserve it. Their police department there works very hard. I will tell you, um, a lot of people take our, our police officers for granted, however, and, and the gravity of being number six is uh, we're a tourist destination and we're a, uh, actually a, uh, just a, a, a destination city. People come to shop at our mall, they come to enjoy the Pachanga Casino, and they come to enjoy the uh, wine country as well. So we tend to have our hands full, and at uh, number six, I think that's quite the feat. And, uh, that is really good. Yes. The second thing, and um, probably a, a bit, bit more meaningful, is about uh, maybe a little over a year and a half, uh, early in 2013, uh, I was honored to give, uh, uh, when I was then mayor, the Mayor's Medal of Courage and honor to a gentleman by the name of uh, Tim Sweeney. Uh, Tim Sweeney was uh, dying of uh, liver cancer, but he chose to make his ordeal uh, public and went on a crusade throughout all the regional cities to encourage organ donation, especially since um, he was living it and needing a uh, liver transplant. Uh, why he uh, was in this state of, of dying with courage, he continued to be involved in community events and affairs, um, volunteering for the R. Nicholas Foundation. Um, he was a, uh, uh, a very uh, prolific comedian not only holding shows here in our own uh, community theater, but also um, being uh, a very connected as a Hollywood writer and a, and a uh, Hollywood consultant, um, also holding shows out in the Hollywood area. And he also made himself a mentor to many of the local leaders uh, here in Temecula in this region. Mr. Sweeney died last Aww. week, and um, he died very well. He died in his sleep, and he died uh, giving or deepening the faith of all of us, and he died with a lot of courage, and he died publicly. And uh, I'm going to ask the council when we adjourn that we'd adjourn in uh, his name and uh, honor him. There's going to be a service here. Um, hopefully, it might even be in these chambers, and we're trying to set that up. It's not a city affair that's being set up. I'm just helping them. Um, and if you're interested in attending, I'm sure you'll hear about that. And that's it, Madam Mayor. All right. Thank you, Mr. Nagar. Okay, and we said we had some people requesting to speak on consent calendar. We do, Madam Mayor. We have two speakers uh, under item number eight. Okay. Matthew Fagan to be followed by Larry Markham. And Madam Mayor, I'm gonna pull item number eight. All right, so we're pulling item number eight. And you know what then, uh, let me read this. All matters listed under consent calendar are considered to be routine and all will be enacted by one roll call vote. There will be no discussion of these items unless members of the city council request specific items be removed from the consent calendar for separate action. Um, let me read them and then we'll go ahead and take the speakers after that. Number one, standard ordinance and resolution adoption procedure. Number two, approve the action minutes of October 28, 2014. Number three, list of demands. <coughs> Number four, approve and file city treasurer's report as of September 30th, 2014. Number five, adopt the 2014 conflict of interest code. Number six, approve a municipal bail schedule for violations to chapter 12.08, taxi cabs of the Temecula Municipal Code. Number seven, approve the first amendment to the agreement with environmental science associates for the preparation of a supplemental environmental impact report for the Temecula Valley Hospital heliport relocation. Number eight, direct staff to prepare amendment to Title 17 of the Municipal Code, providing for potential time extensions beyond those allowed currently for approved development plans at the request of Council Member Nagar. 
Number nine, approve the second amendment to the agreement for consultant services with Harris and Associates for French Valley Parkway Interchange, phase one, PW07-04. Number 10, reject all bids for the Old Town Temecula Community Theater remediation, PW12-04. Number 11, accept improvements and notice of completion for the Murrieta Creek Bridge, Overland Drive, phase one, demolition, PW13-03. Number 12, approve plans and specifications and solicitation of construction bids for Fire Station 73, Living Quarters Upgrade, PW13-07. Number 13, approve the third amendment to the agreement with ABM Building Services, LLC, for heating, ventilation, and air conditioning maintenance services. Number 14, establish an all-way stop control at the intersection of Clubhouse Drive at Bay Hill Drive. Move consent. So move consent. With the exception of pulling the I'll take a second, please. Second. And I have a second. Please cast your votes. <clears throat> so that is four eyes with Mr. Comachero absent. Thank you, gentlemen. And Madam Mayor, if it pleases, I'll go ahead and give the staff report for number eight, seeing how it was myself who put it on the agenda. All right, then uh, let's go ahead and have, uh, let's go ahead and have our comments. Well, one of them is for number eight, you said? Both of them are for number oh, eight. Oh, both of them are for number eight. Okay, so then let's go ahead and do that one first, Mr. Thank Nagar. You. Thank you, Madam Mayor, and I'll keep it brief. Um, whenever uh, land is subdivided and, and uh, we're looking at, uh, at that project as a council, we're typically looking at track maps that are uh, applicable to what's known as the Subdivision Map Act. And when a map is approved in accordance with the Subdivision Map Act, you're uh, uh, approved for a certain number, microphone. you're approved for a certain number of years, uh, I believe it's three, and then you are able to come in and ask for um, three, or is it you're approved for three and you're able to get two one-year extensions to those maps, correct, Mr.? Uh, actually, you're approved for two years, and then you, you can get three additional one-year extensions. One-year extensions. extensions. I'm talking about track maps now, not plot plans. Uh, with track maps, you can get up to five years. Up to five years. And, and because of the recession, the assembly and the state legislature um, signed by the governor saw the wisdom on four, maybe five different occasions to legislatively lengthen that time because what was occurring was <laughs> track maps were being approved, let's say in the early 2000s, and then the recession hit, and you had track maps that were expiring that were very good track maps um, that would have expired without the opportunity to renew them, hence rending their entitlement mm -hmm. uh, void. That would have made the need for the developers to come back and renew those track maps, pay for all the consultant studies, everything that they did in the first place to get that approved. But the state legislator, the legislature did not cover plot plans. A plot plan is that type of development which, which doesn't seek to subdivide land, but seeks to take a piece of property and improve it on its own merit, whether it's across one parcel or several parcels. Currently, and this is pretty uniform throughout uh, Riverside, currently a plot plan's good for two years, and you have three one-year ex uh, uh, extensions, and typically you have to show that you did something the first two years, actively working on it. Um, What's happening, however, is that due to the recession, um, it's very difficult to move plot plans or get things built after they were approved, and there's a propensity for, uh, for them to expire. So I wanted to ask the council that they would uh, direct staff to begin to craft, at council's direction and with council's input, an ordinance that would allow for the extension of plot plans, the rules of which we need to discuss. And that's my staff report. Um, I have a question. Will this will will granting these extensions have any impact on anything else? Will they change anything as far as I don't know? Will they have any <clears throat> impact on anything else? That's probably something that we need to analyze when we develop the ordinance. Some of the things that we're looking at, uh, mostly related to environmental CEQA, right. CEQA issues. That's what I'm thinking. So as we formulate the ordinance, uh, we we will start developing what the implications could be, and also. Uh, what type of parameters that we would measure a project against to, to be able to qualify them for an extension. Because we could grant an extension, but something else could expire in the meantime. Is that possible? Possibly, yes. Yeah. Okay. Um, that's the only question I had, Chuck. 
Um, just to make sure I understand what the request is, <clears throat> Madam Mayor, it appears that uh, Mr. Nagar is just asking uh, us to give direction to staff mm -hmm. to at least analyze the potential for this. And I, I, I don't know that there'd be any reason. I know we have a couple of speakers, um, but I don't know that there'd not be any reason that we wouldn't at least allow analysis uh, of the proposal. That's mm -hmm. not a question. Do you want it in the form of a question? <laughs> no, I think I can put a question mark at the end of it okay. and sort of interpret it as a question. Okay, because it's not Jeopardy. But she'd be a terrible Jeopardy I know. Um, yeah. cont contestant. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, Mr. Roberts, are you okay? No questions? No. Okay. All right, then, Madam City Clerk, you may call Mr. Uh, Matthew Fagan. Matthew Fagan, please, to be followed by Larry Markham. You have to do this. You can only do this in the form of all questions. What is why, Mayor Edwards? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Watch that show a lot. So. Good evening, Mayor Edwards, uh, City Council and, and City Staff. My name is Matthew Fagan. I reside in Temecula. Um, I appreciate this item being on the agenda on the consent calendar uh, tonight, and I appreciate the opportunity to speak to it. Um, I think uh, Mr. Uh, Nagar, Council Member Nagar, uh, framed the uh, situation very succinctly and very clearly. Um, as a practical example, I was contacted by a client who had um, had a plot plan, or sorry, development plan approved in the city back in 2009. Uh, he had a two-year approval and three one-year approvals uh, extensions, and as it turns out, today, November 18th, uh, 2014, his third ex uh, extension expires. So uh, he's got a, a project over uh, uh, it's a, um, a medical building, a two-story medical building over by um, the, um, where Chipotle used to be, uh, where I guess Fat Burger, Lazy Boy over there. This is, you get your, you know, use our, our Temecula landmarks, some of them. And, um, you know, he, he said, uh, what are some opportunities? And again, I expressed what the ordinance, uh, the development code said. And so I think this is a good idea. I don't think this is just a situation that's particular to Temecula. Again, uh, because the state saw in their wisdom for tentative maps to extend those, I think that this is applicable to the city for development plans. Um, Mr. Markham, I've, I've chatted with him a little bit and he'll speak in a couple moments and he will talk to perhaps, um, again, just the setting and how this makes sense the codes really haven't changed in Temecula that much. And I think that will come through as part of the analysis. The general plan hasn't really been updated. The development code hasn't changed. Uh, design guidelines, citywide design guidelines really haven't changed. So there's, there's a lot of merit to extending projects. When you do a, a project initially, it's tens of thousands of dollars. Uh, an extension, I think, is one to $2,000. So it's, it becomes a hardship on the developer to start, just really basically do it all over again. And I think there's more upside to the development community and also to the city to, to move ahead with this. So I'm in support of, of the, the, the council giving direction to staff to do this. Um, I'd also like to offer up um, my services if uh, staff is looking for input from the development community uh, to provide some input into, into whatever analysis and whatever they come up with as a result of their, their homework. Thank I you, Matthew. I appreciate the opportunity. Thank you. Any questions? No, and you, perfect timing. Your yellow light just came on. Okay, um, no questions, you don't want to frame? No, you know, no, that, 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 was a good, a that was a good question, though. Thank you. Yes, thank you. Thank you. Hi, Larry. Uh, Larry Markham, uh, 41635 Enterprise Circle, Temecula. Just to echo uh, uh, Matthew's comments, I appreciate this being put on agenda. This has been an ongoing issue uh, with uh, pretty much all the jurisdictions in Riverside County. Uh, the county will be moving forward to change their ordinance uh, to go to a different, uh, probably more of a five-year lifespan without extensions of time. The other problem we have, if you have a plot plan or a conditional use permit or development plan in the city's jargon that's approved with a map, you have two different, extent, two different lifespans. And there have been numerous projects that, that developers have, unfortunately, uh, thinking that both were the same lifespan have had their development plan expire or their CUP expire while their map is still alive. Uh, and so uh, consolidating this would be, I think would be preferable. Uh, also it's, as, as has been stated, 
The biggest issue is typically getting on development plans and, and conditional use permits is usually getting construction financing, which in today's world is far more difficult than it was several years mm -hmm. ago. And that is usually the reason that most projects do die. We have already gone through the process of actually re, basically re-approving projects specifically to extend the lifespans. And we have several of those underway in, in uh, the county and other jurisdictions. Uh, so I strongly encourage uh, that, that this be moved forward by the council. And as Matthew said, happy to help with uh, the process. Uh, and toward the question earlier, if there are uh, changes, typically what happens to most extensions of time, there is an analysis by planning staff of determining whether or not there has been any changes in the development codes or anything, or even state regulations such as water quality management, that sort of thing. And usually it is a requirement of the extension of time that the, the applicant accept those changes to remain consistent with the current development code at, at that time. So that, that is part of the analysis for extensions of time. So I can assure you that it does take place. So I wonder, otherwise it would be a moot point. I mean, Pardon? I wondered because otherwise you change one thing and it's a moot point if right. nothing else changes. Yes, very true. Thank you, Larry. Thank you. Thank you. Madam Mayor, just follow up comment. Sure. Uh, before it was questions or before it was my staff report. Now right, it's, no, now it's, it's common. fine. Okay. Um, I'll give the council a couple of examples. There, there are times when maybe we, we don't want to extend a plot plan and there are times when maybe you do. And that's why we need to craft something that kind of works in, in both cases. Um, if you recall when we were dealing with, let's say the hospital issue, if you remember, it took years and years and years and as long as they had their entitlement, which was a plot plan approval, mm -hmm. um, it was keeping other hospitals from coming. And we got to the point to where that plot plan came up for renewal and instead of extending it, we pretty much said, you either build it or we're letting it expire. That's a situation where we needed it to expire because it eventually ended up getting us a hospital um, and that was a good thing. Uh, Mr. Markham, I believe, had a project that's over on, I think it was Moraga or Lindy Lane and, and uh, um, Rancho California Road where he got a, a senior care facility approved. Or there was another one over on uh, Pachanga Parkway and Loma Linda, I think it was, where there was a senior care facility approved. That was a plot plan. Finances didn't work out. That plot plan expired. We probably wouldn't have wanted that one to expire. We would have very much liked that to be built. But because the statute didn't allow it, um, there's just no opportunity to extend it. So I'm encouraging staff to find a way to work through those mechanics that, that either there's a, a, a set amount of time, the county's looking at five years, as Mr. Markham said, maybe we look at that, or maybe there's also that, and the mechanism to continue to renew it at council discretion, maybe it's five years, and then maybe there it's every year thereafter at council's discretion something of that nature, whatever, however my colleagues want to weigh in. Um, Mr. Markham also brought something else uh, up that was very interesting. In the case of the senior care facility, they might have had a parcel map and a development plan. Yeah. The development plan would have expired and their parcel map would have kept on going because of all these extensions to the state legislature, but they would have had a parcel map that's useful, useless to them. So it was kind of an anomaly. So, um, uh, subject to comments from my other colleagues, uh, I'm going to move this item, but I'm also going to add that uh, staff seek input from the development community um, uh, in the process. Okay. I have a motion and a second, so go ahead and use your buttons. Let the record Sorry. reflect Mr. Washington is uh, hitting his uh, screen. Are you dead, Mr. Washington? All right. You think I was being then too rough? I think it? he was. There it goes. Okay, so you didn't record a vote. You've beaten your machine there to death. Off the dais. This is off. It says, you're, like being thrown out it of says the you're off the dais. So <laughs> let the record reflect we have four eyes with uh, Mayor Pro Tem Comatero absent and no no's so thank you gentlemen and i will entertain a motion on the remaining no i think we did it already consent yes did we madam city clerk we did we're done with consent then very good then i will recess the city council meeting to the scheduled meetings of the temecula community services district and all the other agencies so mr washington 
Would you like to do the Temecula Community Services District? Yes, ma'am, I will. I don't have a gavel, but I... I will loan you the gavel, the official oh, gavel. incredible. Just don't break it. <laughs> call to order the... <laughs> Pretty weak. <clears throat> Temecula Community Services District meeting uh, in the absence of President Jeff Comichero. I'll run the meeting as the Vice President of Community Services. And you are? Chuck Washington. And in the position of? Vice President. Community Services Thank District. Thank you. I just, wanted to I just stated that. No, I wanted you to say it again. Oh, you can't hear still, huh? What? <laughs> oh, are you really Vice President? <laughs> yeah. I had to point that yeah. out to her. Oh, are you? Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> See, right. he didn't know either. No, I thought, I thought the mayor was. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But we flipped for it, me or her. Check first. <laughs> yeah. yeah. No, 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 no. <laughs> um, Maddie, uh, Madam City Clerk, please let the record reflect that all the uh, directors are here with the exception of President Camachero. Do we have a request to speak under public comment? We do not. Okay, I'll uh, skip over the reading of the rules again since we've already heard them once and the uh, mayor did, did that so eloquently. Um, <laughs> <laughs> under consent calendar, all matters listed in consent calendar are considered to be routine and all will be enacted with one roll call vote. There will be no discussion of those items unless members of the Temecula Community Services District request specific items to be removed from the consent calendar for separate action. Are there any requests to pull any consent calendar items? No. Uh, no. Okay, item number 15 is approved the minutes of October 28th, 2014. Item 16 is approve a lease to own an in installation and storage agreement with Decor Light Inc. for Old Town Temecula holiday lighting and decor. I have a motion to approve consent calendar. So moved. I have a motion by Mr. Roberts. Second. A second by the mayor. Please register your Push votes. Your button, Mr. Roberts. What? Push your button. I'm just transfixed by the way you <laughs> just do your meeting. He's transfixed by Mr. Uh, Washington's right meetings. I'm stuck and again. Right. Work. <laughs> Let's register a, a voice vote. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? There it goes. You're I still. I am not off still. today. I'm stuck on it. I refuse not to be recognized. <laughs> <clears throat> Can we have a director's report, please? <laughs> yes, Mr. Vice President. Um, we are in uh, day eight of the 25 days of fun, which is part of Temecula's <laughs> 25th anniversary celebration. A reminder: this Saturday is a 2.5 mile Silver Streak fun ride beginning at 9 o'clock a.m. here Are in the Civic that? Center Town Square Park. <laughs> so get creative for this fun ride and decorate your bike in silver. Also this Saturday, Michael, don't miss our silver, silver anniversary tea party from 11 a.m. to 1 o'clock p.m. at the History Museum. Michael, courtesy of the Old Town <laughs> Spice and Tea Merchants, enjoying, uh, enjoy a sampling of delicious teas and light refreshments. And on Sunday, the 23rd, from 1 o'clock to 3 o'clock p.m. at the Civic Center Conference Center is a Silver Star Rose Talk and Giveaway presented in conjunction with the Temecula Valley Rose Society. Meet other rose gardeners, listen to great presentations, and enter a drawing to win one of 25 Silver Star Rose Bushes. For additional information, please visit the city's web page or call 951-694-6480. That concludes my report, Michael. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Hawkins. Pay no attention to the man under the dais. <laughs> Can we have a general manager's report, please? Nothing further tonight. Comments from the directors? Uh, no. Motion to adjourn? Uh, so moved. Second? Second. I have a motion second. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Mm, no. <laughs> we are adjourned. I need my gavel back. Thank you. All right. I will reconvene the Temecula City Council meeting. And going on to item number 17. Receive a presentation by U.S. Army Corps of Engineers and Riverside County Flood Control and Water Conservation District regarding Murrieta Creek Flood Control, Environmental Restoration and Recreation Project Phase 2. Dusty, how are you? Hey. Long time no hey. see. Good evening, Madam Mayor, City Council members. Your screen's not going to work, is it? 
That's okay. I just can watch you and. Yeah, but there's like such a just, fully, th there, there is one picture you will need to see. We're going to oh. bask <laughs> in the shadow of flood control. Thank you. Well, good evening. Um, the Army Corps is here and they have a presentation about the upcoming project, but I wanted to say just a few words uh, as a lead in. Uh, my name is Dusty Williams. I'm the chief engineer at the Riverside County Flood Control District. And you're invited. What I came to do tonight was to invite you to a ground rebreaking or a reground breaking. <laughs> if you'll remember, it was a number of years ago that most of us gathered at the community center and initiated phase one of the Murray Creek project. It's been a long time since that happened, as evidenced by Mr. Nagar's trim build there, and well, me too. <laughs> Mike, I think you were 12 and I was 13, but. Look how tall he looks. And that was Councilman Stone, not Supervisor Stone. Oh my God! So that was November 12th, 19, or 2003. So it's been a long time in coming. We built phase one, we finished that, and we've been trying to get money out of the federal government to complete the project ever since. Both cities, the supervisor's office, and our office have been doing that, and I must report with little success. There are a lot of needs in the country, and that money has gone elsewhere. But what we have done in the meantime is we have saved our pennies, and we have quite a few dollars in the bank that is to meet our local obligation. We don't have all the money that we would need to meet our total obligation, but we were able to work with the Corps of Engineers and Congress and forward our share prematurely in the term of about $17 million. What that's going to do is build phase two or most of phase two, and that's what the Corps is here to tell you about. But given that it's been so long since we've We've talked about it. I thought I'd remind you what we're talking about. That's what phase one looks like. That's Mirada Creek. That's finished. But those of you that were here 20 years ago, this is what Mirada Creek can look like. And I think it's necessary every now and then to remind ourselves what Mother Nature can bring for us. And then we just have a little comic up here talking about the difference between optimists and pessimists. We haven't flooded in this town since 93, or, oh, wait, that got changed. It's supposed to be 93. So are you an optimist? Are we safe forever? And I think a lot of people are. But this council and Murrieta's council thinks we're due. And it was at your behest and the Murrieta's city council's behest and Supervisor Stone that the Flood Control District and the Corps were told to get moving, let's get something in the ground as soon as possible. And that's why we're here today, to start that process. The invitation I mentioned at the beginning that is for the groundbreaking on the 15th of December at the community center. There will be gold shovels for all. Uh, council, or council, Congressman Calvert has put it on his schedule. General Toy from the Army Corps of Engineers, who was very instrumental in getting the project finally to us, he will be present, and numerous others. So I do invite you to that. And then I was just talking to Mr. Garcia before the meeting. Uh, the city is very aware of the impact along the, the neighbors to the project, mainly the commercial neighbors, and we have just, I'm going to say pencil, not inked, Tom, but we, we've got a plan to hold a community meeting for those folks that are adjacent to the creek to explain to them what the impact's going to be, and that's tentatively scheduled for January 26th in the community room across the hall. Good. So I hope you'll be able to join us at that as well. Groundbreaking is December 15th? The groundbreaking is the 15th of December. At what time? Oh, I knew there were going to be questions. <laughs> oh, we'll pencil it in for him, Dusty. Don't worry. I believe Don't it's worry. 10 o'clock. Okay. But invitations went out late last week, so you should be getting something. But uh, I, I'm sure Mr. Garcia or Amir, no. I wish uh, I did. All right. I know I'm going to be here all, all right. day. Dusty, we have it on our schedule for uh, 10 o'clock. That. I knew that's what it he was. He knew that. Be. He just seemed oh. to wear paying attention. All right. Thank you, Aaron. Quick question. Thank you, Mike. Are, 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 were you finished? It, I, I'm going to introduce uh, Paul from the core next, so if you have any questions of me, please. Well, I was just going to ask if you were going to explain what phase two included, but maybe you are. 
That's what Mr. Underwood is here for. Thank you. I'm just here to show the nice pictures of you from a long time Don't ago. Don't jump ahead, Mr. You know, Nagar. I pledge. Face. Don't <laughs> jump ahead. Now that, that picture, I need to lose some weight, okay? <laughs> that, that, that was, I have to tell you, that was, I had just gotten elected to my second term. I remember that. That was a couple of days after that. It was, uh, it was interesting yeah. how the players have changed, but some haven't. 2003. And I've been there forever. Exactly. You look like Gumby with a hat on. Yes. Nice and tall, thin. With that, I would like to introduce Mr. Paul Underwood from the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers. I will stay yeah. if you do have questions afterwards. So. Thank, Thank you. you, Dusty. Good evening, sir. Good evening. Uh, my name is Paul Underwood. I'm the project manager from the Corps of Engineers. I've been working on the Marietta Creek project for a little over two years now. Uh, let me uh, get this acclimated. This is the total project that was authorized back in 2000. And uh, two years ago, we were here to kind of explain to you what our game plan was in coordination with the county as to how we could get phase two constructed. And uh, the, the elements of that, uh, the elements of that plan were we needed to amend our project cooperation agreement that would allow the sponsor, our Riverside County, to accelerate their provision of their share up front uh, in advance of the federal funds. Number two is we're going to use available funds to finalize the plans and specs uh, for the phase two project. And uh, the accelerated funds were going to be used to award a base contract for the phase two. And that's what I have up on the screen here is the base contract uh, was going to, is going to occupy about a mile and a quarter. It's about half of the phase two distance. Option one and option two would be options to the contract that would be about three quarters of a mile each. Uh, then the, the next thing, a part of our game plan was to do a, uh, what we call a post authorization change report, which would allow us to defer the phase four project mm -hmm. and make the project compete a lot better, get the BCR ratio a lot better, compete a lot better for federal funds. And then uh, number four, just continue to seek funds, federal funds to award the the two options. So that was our plan. So last time we were talking about what we were going to do, but now we're going to talk about what we did. And so uh, it took it took a lot longer than we expected. But uh, the, the two of the big hurdles we had were we had to get an environmental clearance for the project. And uh, there were a lot of agencies involved, uh, environmental agencies, and everyone, we all had different viewpoints. And uh, we were able to come up with some win-win uh, compromises that eventually, after a lot of coordination, were able to uh, were able to uh, get environmental clearance on July 29th, 2014. A very important day. It was a long time coming. Uh, then uh, the next big hurdle was the was the actual the amendment that allowed us to get the federal funds. Uh, that required about a nine month process to get permission to do it. Because this, uh, this is the first one, one in our region, to, first project in our region uh, to use accelerated funds for a construction project. And so this was just this was precedent setting. We got permission. And then it took about another nine months to get the agreement itself hammered out and agreed to by all parties. And we executed that on the 19th of August, 2014. Then that moves us to where we're at now. We just advertised. We approved the plans and specs. We advertised this uh, October 29th. So it's out there now. We're getting contractor inquiries. We're, we're working this right now. We really looked to open bids uh, early December and uh, award by in mid-December. It's a little, it floats a little bit because you never know exactly when you can open bids because of the questions that come in. And uh, we're, we're looking to issue a notice to proceed in, in January 2015. Oh, contractor be on the ground, uh, beginning to do things by the end of January. Now, just to give you just a, just a quick overview, this is, this is just a Google Earth image, but it just shows you where the, the base contract lays out in the real world. Uh, it starts, connects on to the phase one project just downstream of First Street mm -hmm. and goes uh, about 1,500 feet upstream of, uh, of Rancho California, to give you kind of an idea. That's what we, uh, that's what we intend to uh, award uh, in the December time frame. Now this is just a blow up of just the, the base of just the uh, of the base contract. 
Essentially, it's going to be broken up in two pieces. The downstream end will be a soil cement uh, bank protection. It's a very steep bank protection uh, because the, it's, the real estate's so constrained through there, we, ne we needed to get the flood capacity. And then, uh, like halfway between Main Street and Rancho California, we transitioned to a more standard rip wrap, laid back slope, uh, and allows, and we have a little more, we have more property to do that with. And it's a lot less expensive to build that kind of a. So I wanna, what I want to do is just kind of just walk through. Uh, oh, what you're going to see right, right off the, the first thing you're going to see when the contractor starts is a clear and grub operation. They got to go through and clear everything in the base contract area. They will, uh, they have to have that done by May, uh, March 15th so that we can avoid the uh, environmental restrictions and be able to continue construction. The next thing you'll see is uh, excavation effort. And the next thing after that would be the riprap and the soil cement placement. I just want to very quickly, uh, this is a general cross section where uh, we're using the soil cement on the downstream end. There's a little piece that says riparian corridor on there. That's where we're going to be planting mm -hmm. some trees. It'll be vario habitat. And also there's a berm there, and that was part of our coordination with the environmental agencies, is that allows, it splits the flow and allows flows to remain under the trees which gives uh, amphibian habitat, which is something that they greatly desired. And it also gives us a, a slight increase in our flood conveyance capacity, because we were gonna have a bench there. So it really, it really was a win-win type situation. Uh, the soil cement, just to give you a, just a little bit of better picture of it, it is exactly what it says, you mix soil and cement, it seems pretty low tech, but uh, it acts very, very hard protection. It's a very resilient type structure. It'll be 12 feet wide and built in lifts, about eight inches each. And it's, you, when you watch it being constructed, it's a lot more like a paving operation. Same kind of equipment, but when, you, uh, when, when it dries, it's a very, very hard concrete-like structure. And that's what we're going to be putting uh, down that second part now through the downtown area. And then when we transition to upstream, uh, it'll be a riprap. Uh, 15 inch stone riprap up the, the bottom, like two thirds of the bank, and which just uh, protects the toe from unraveling with a lot of flows, with the high uh, velocity flows. And then uh, up, you see where it says turf reinforcement mat. We're using a, uh, a plastic turf reinforcement mat product that's for erosion protection. You plant it, you hydro seed it, and then you use a lot of, we have a lot of plants going in there to lock it in. And it, it'll protect from erosion for the for the lower velocity, deeper flows. So uh, and it's everywhere the, the rock isn't required, we're using that. And uh, again, we'll be planting uh, native materials in that area, which is part of our environmental compliance. The last slide, I just want the way ahead the, is uh, as we go from here, once we award this, what we're intending to do is to gain the approval of that post authorization change report. We've developed it. It's had a policy review. We're, we're, gonna, we're gonna try to send that up to, we intend to send that up to uh, our, our headquarters for approval on, uh, in the month of January. And we anticipate, uh, we, we, I guess we hope for an approval of that by the May timeframe, about the May 2015. Once that's approved, we will be able to compete better for federal funds and we're gonna keep seeking federal funding to award the options and also uh, to initiate and complete the phase three design, which is the basin just upstream of the phase two. Wow. So that's essentially where we're at right now and what we're looking at. And just wanna open it up, any questions? Great, Mike. Thank you, and thanks for your presentation. Did we, um, did we get a solution to the bike trail to go onto Rancho California Road, are we gonna, is there any attempt to fix that? I know we have a trail um, that that takes off on both sides. Are you talking about where it was gonna go underneath the bridge? Yeah, I think it needs to. Are we gonna be able to do that? You know what, I'd have to verify with the designer on that. I'm not I'm not certain. Okay. I just don't have that with me right now, but I can, I can get that answer back to you. Would you? Thanks. I, Thanks. I will. I know that it's in, it, we've been doing a lot with our bikes and trails master plan, and that's kind of one of the biggies is how do we cross Rancho California Road, particularly when you're uh, um, coming uh, from the north to the south. It's, it's, it's very difficult 
the way we've set up Diaz Road, and, and it's just very difficult. If you go out there, you I see remember many discussions on that. I just don't remember what the final resolution was on that. So. And how does, um, I mean, we're all praying for rain. Um, let's say our prayers are answered and we get the deluge we're looking for, or at least a modicum of rain. Do you guys still able to keep on schedule? Oh, you mean if it, are you asking if it rains during construction? Yes. Mm -hmm. I, mm -hmm. Well, that's you know that's uh, what the contractor will do is uh, they will cordon off half of the half of the channel to convey flows and work on the opposite side. But of course, if we get a huge deluge, that's right. okay. that's something we'd have to accommodate for. Got it. So we're not not anticipating that, but it is in our contract to uh, for the contractor to anticipate those things. And mm -hmm. if we needed to, if there was a Huge came through, a huge storm did come through, then uh, we'd have to do a modification of the contract and, and handle that. Thank you. Chuck? Um, relative to the question that Mike just asked about the continuation of the bike path, I think probably one of the challenges that we might want to look at before we get too far down the road is we have a rather, uh, yeah, not extensive, but a very nice path that runs along the west side of the creek mm -hmm. from uh, Winchester all the way down to Ranch California. And I think previous to this, Dusty, we've had discussions about some sort of a service road actually that would be on the other side of the creek um, and maybe serve a dual purpose, much as what we've done with Santa Gertrudis or we have a, a bike path or a road, but if they're on opposite sides of the creek, then we've kind of not made best use of the transitions from one to the other. So if we can look at that early on, then we can avoid those very expensive and time consuming changes. If we're gonna have to build something on one side or the other anyway, it might behoove us to look at how we, and, and I recognize that that also involves at the other end, once we finally cobble together funding that we want to continue that Santa Gertrudis uh, pathway um, beyond uh, Inez right now, all the way down to, the, to Murrieta Creek, we gotta somehow get to the other side of Murrieta Creek or stay on this side. And so then we've got some challenges there, but all of these things can link together if we, I think, design it properly. Just need to know that going in up front. Okay, maybe we could uh, get together and, yeah. and talk that through. Sky hooks. <laughs> I know when we did phase one that we had to relocate a number of beavers. There were beavers in phase one between, did. did you know that? I did not know that. Yeah, between uh, the Santiago Bridge and the confluence of the two creeks down at at the bottom, have you surveyed phase two? Surveyed it for beavers? Yeah. I'm, I'm not aware of serving it for beavers, uh, but uh, we are gonna do we monitoring uh, before we go out there. Yeah, my, my office is pretty yeah, nice close. Yes, my, my office is pretty close down there and we've, we've seen them, not, of course the water is pretty much gone now, but we see them in the spring. Beavers? Beavers. Right. Well, we, there will be monitoring before we start to clear and grubbing, so if we need to relocate things, we can. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, there are beavers down there. Um, and I don't know, because it depends on how much water's there now, but they had to relocate a lot of them. They come up from the south. We'll keep our eyes open yeah. when we get down there. <laughs> um, and just, just to make it clear so that people don't think, any, anytime there's cement going up the, the banks, it's covered. So it does not look like the LA River in any way, shape, or form. I just want to make that clear because- There actually, there is no cement going right. up the banks. But I mean, the, we, the riprap, that we do put in will be covered with a soil cover. And right, I knew that, but anytime people hear, yeah. when they hear you say rip concrete rap, or rip wrap rap, or any, rap. yeah, rip wrap, yeah. Not rip wrap. We just wanna make sure that it's gonna look all natural, be planted, and it, and it looks beautiful. Did you know about the beavers, I mean, Dusty? Paul doesn't have that, the history that we have going way back. Yeah. But th this channel is the way that the citizens want it. It was that concrete LA River at the first inception back yeah. in the 90s. Right. The, the soil cement that uh, the Corps is putting in, it's not going to be natural looking, but it's gonna be more natural than the LA River. It's a very rough concrete. It's stair-stepped and rough and rugged. Uh, plants do get a foothold and grow in it, but it's not going to look vegetated on, by and large. 
but it's going to look more rugged than slick concrete. The, the point here is because of the location of the existing structures. And it's through Old Town, right, where it's so narrow and steep. About, just about half a mile. Yeah. We could, the only way to get all the water through there and keep the flatter side slopes was to tear out buildings. That wasn't acceptable to anyone. So the compromise was that it would be steep. I keep saying concrete, and that sends the wrong word, but soil cement is a different product. But there, there, it will be a more structural look to it downtown. And it's dark, dark colored. It, it actually takes it takes on the it takes on some Bird of the color of the color. earth that was used. <laughs> they they actually so mix kind of the dirt that's there with cement. They mix it in place. It's not an imported product. But uh, it, it, you're, you're, I'm not going to tell you it's going to look natural, but it's going to look better than the LA River, and it's going to convey water much better than it does now, which is really ultimate plan is that, that we don't want anybody flooding in the downtown area. But it's so narrow in there that the Citizens Committee way back was willing to give up this, this 0.6 mile. But as Paul said, we have a repairing strip that's all varies between 100 and 150 feet wide the whole seven miles of the channel. Here it's going to be very narrow though, but there still will be trees and a repairing strip that will buffer some of that look to it. As well. well, if we wanted to, could we plant something at the top that would hang over? As long as it doesn't impede the flow. Okay. And in, and in answer to uh, Ms. Washington's question, too, there are trails on both sides. They do function as maintenance mm -hmm. access, but mm -hmm. equestrian will be on one side and bicycle pedestrian on the other side, and it'll be contiguous the whole seven miles on either side. Exactly how that works with the, with the pieces there, I know what you're talking about. Right. There are places where it won't work and it'll have to be taken out, but we're very conscious of what the city has done. I think the city has done a good job showing the, the citizens what can be done, what can be expected. This is not going to be the LA River. It's not going to have concrete side slopes. It's not going to have chain link fences, and it's not going to have graffiti on it. So yeah. it will look not natural. It's going to be a straight line, but it will look pleasing, I believe. Right. I believe you will find the businesses downtown actually turning some of their businesses around or maybe even constructing porches or, or oh, yes. dining areas yeah. on the back side. And, uh, but it's not going to have water in it all the time either. Beavers if are If we not. leave the beavers there. Yeah, I know. Maybe we can have the river walk. <laughs> <You don't, laughs> yeah, but they have water too. That's Right. That's, have you, I mean, did you know about the beavers in phase one? Oh, I remember the beavers. They're up in Lake Skinner right now. Yeah. yeah no, that was quite oh, a conference. But remember, at that time, there was the, uh, the discharge, the constant discharge yeah. from the water treatment plant. And there was more water, and they, yes. they did build those dams in there, and actually, they had quite a beaver dam. Well, we had, a, we had a lot of them this spring. Yeah. They come back every spring. I, you, you I gotta, did not hear that. you got to yeah. complete the story, though. You're right. They were moved to Lake Skinner, and then they started eating all the trees at Lake Skinner, and they eventually got moved out of state. It was a big, uh, it was a big deal. Some, I think there was five. Two went to Tennessee. Three went to Texas. I'm not kidding. And you know what they said? Okay, they said, kidding. we don't like the South, and then they all came well, back. they keep in touch. First thing that will happen, <laughs> and I'm not sworn to Council too, we're, we're going to catch a, a lot of flack for some of this because this is big-time construction. These are big yellow machines, and they make noise, and they make dirt, and we're going to hear about it. But it's nothing compared to the screams we heard. Nothing compared to 1993. The first thing that we, exactly. The first thing that will happen will be clearing and grubbing. We have to remove all the vegetation. One, to make construction feasible. But two, during the winter months, nesting is not happening. We need to remove that vegetation prior to March 15th so the, the animals don't move back into that and slow down construction. Are we looking, what is the least bell vireo? Is that what we're looking for? Is that, is that the 15th? Is that what the? That's, the, that's, the, that's the main thing. That's the main thing is the little gray bird. We need to make sure that they don't get in there and form nests because then that should shut down construction. Okay. So our real goal here is March 15th. That is a, a hard deadline. We have to have all the vegetation removed at that time. Okay. So it's going to be ugly for a while. Think to the future. Think yeah, we do. Think how nice it'll look when it's over. We do. Think of phase one. It was ugly while it was being built. It was. So. Madam Mayor. Okay, Just got it. Before you guys leave, Dusty, um, kudos to you and the Army Corps and to your staff. This is a long time coming. Gosh, and yes. Boy, meetings and meetings and meetings. I know Councilmember Washington and I serve on our local uh, uh, city's representative to that, but before that it was another 
There was a, I started up the second started, round of I meetings mean, back is, in the, yeah, goes 2005. Goes back a long way. But, uh, so yeah, I represented Murrieta. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I've been in front of you many times. <laughs> long time. Long time. Yeah. So this is, this is receiving but, file, And the last right? thing, I'd be remiss if I did not publicly thank uh, Congressman Calvert. Yes. The, what Paul kind of glossed over saying, we got the environmental taken care of, that was not easy at all. And it really took a number of calls from the Congressman's office to the Fish and Wildlife Headquarters to actually free this thing up. He has been a champion for this when he was the representative down From here. From the beginning. And when he was not the representative, and now he is again. Right. He's always been a champion for it. So I'm very pleased that he's able to free up his calendar to be here on the 15th. Yeah, we're glad. He, he is definitely a man that stayed with this project through the entirety of it. We'll make sure that we give him extra special recognition that day for it. And we hope it doesn't rain on the 15th. It rained. The last groundbreaking, if you'll remember. Do. Wouldn't That's that be ironic? The hat on. Hasn't yeah. rained in months. Wouldn't we, that be? We, yeah. we actually held it indoors for a little bit, and then we went outside for the groundbreaking. Well, and we did the, the actual shovel ceremony on grass. We were supposed to be in the dirt. That's right. But That's it was right. mud. That's right. And you said something about not getting your loafers. Well, right. I, oh, of was course. That it? Was, was that it, Dusty? Okay, do you have to throw that bar? Yeah, of course. Okay. <laughs> Mr. Skinny Man. We'll Thank bring you. rubber boots for you this time. Thank you. Okay, Mr. Second. Roberts, motion to receive and file, second. All in favor, aye. Thank you, gentlemen. All right, Mr. City Manager, anything? Uh, just one item. Um, Jonathan Hall, if you could put up that uh, slide or that website. Um, just wanted to remind our community and invite everyone to visit the City of Temecula website. Um, Mr. Hawkins mentioned it earlier, but a lot of work went into creating and designing uh, a basically a 25-year advent calendar that's on the city's website. And so you can go there. We're in the middle of this celebration in honor of uh, 25 years of cityhood. And there's different challenges each and every day. There's really uh, interesting photographs that we've received from our community that look back at our, our city before cityhood. And um, so anyway, uh, get involved, follow along with us as we uh, lead up to December 1st. So uh, thank you to Jonathan Hall for putting this together. Madam Mayor. Mr. Nagar. Thank you. Two things before we adjourn. First, maybe we can commission uh, uh, Kevin Hawkins there to come up with a song and sing it, the 25 days of Temecula. No. Okay, okay. at the next meeting, <laughs> see if you can no. come up with something. Okay. No. <laughs> He's turning red. No. Look at this, okay. And then, uh, no, on a more serious note, I'm going to move to adjourn the uh, meeting uh, in the uh, uh, humble and honorable name of Mr. Uh, Tim Sweeney and uh, blessings and prayers to his family. All right, um, city attorney has nothing, correct, Peter? Uh, yes, uh, Madam Mayor and members of the council, we did have a closed session on uh, labor negotiations and we have no actions to report from that under the Brown Act. All right, and now Mr. Nagar, you wanna make a more formal second. adjournment? So we had a motion and a second to adjourn and all in favor? Aye. Aye. The motion stands adjourned. I mean, the meeting stands adjourned, thank you. Stands adjourned.